Here we are, folks, for another dupes video. It's been a hot minute, but if you want to see some of my old dupes videos, I take these freaking seriously, y'all. I really do. <laughs> So I will link my most recent ones down below because I still stand by any dupe I've found in the past. Like we are adding to my dupes list today because I've got around 10, maybe more different dupes. And I'm gonna be honest, this might be my best collection of dupes yet. And in this case, we have a lot that I actually think are just better than the high-end counterpart. We're gonna save some money today. I'm just clearly very excited about it. I've got my coffee. I'm nice and caffeinated as usual. So before we dive in, which side of my face do you think is the high-end version? Which side do you think is the drugstore version? Put your guesses in the comments down below because once we dive into me actually showing you these, you're gonna be able to see really quickly which side is the drugstore and which side is high-end. So without further ado, let's dive into sharing the dupes I found for you guys. Okay, so I have already started getting ready for the day. I've got my little clips I got on Amazon I can link below. And all I have on my face right now is like SPF foundation, some brows, and I can link what I use down below if you're just curious. So I always feel like overwhelmed doing these videos because I put so much freaking pressure on my myself because I like really take care to find what I genuinely believe are dupes out there and I have maybe my best collection yet of dupes so I'm like excited and anxious for this video. I know I am so weird. Let's get started with the first dupe. This is one that I have been searching high and low for a dupe for and in this case I found a product that I think is actually better than the expensive counterpart. So this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish powder. I have the lightest shade, number one fair. Obviously I've used a ton of this. The way that I use this primarily is on my under eye. I like to set my concealer with it. I don't use it all over my face. I don't feel like it is best used that way. And really my main reasoning for that is if I am going to powder all over my face, I have drier skin. I tend to take a powder foundation and we're going to talk about my favorite here in a bit. The magic of this product is that it's really finely milled for a pressed powder. So when you'd set your under eye with it, it would actually help prevent some of the creasing, but it also would kind of brighten the area. And I felt like it was the only pressed powder I'd found that had the least amount of crepiness on my under eyes. So I'm going to put this on my right side. I've got concealer on, like I said, and I like to kind of make sure there's no concealer trapped in there. And then I just tap it in that area. It brightens the area. It sets it a little bit. Now the Charlotte Tilbury one is $45, but I want to show you a product that is $12.99 and I think is better. <laughs> It is the number seven Lift and Luminate Powder. If you've been watching my channel for the past few months, I can't shut up about this because I really actually do think it's better. And so when this one is gone, this is gonna be the one I repurchase over and over again. I've had both of these for quite a while and the number seven one is the only one I'm reaching for. I wanna show you why I think it is better. So I'm doing the same exact thing, taking the powder, do you see how this side, like my under eye looks flatter than this side? Future Jesse with crazy hair here to say, I'm aware that because of the shadows and the lighting in my room, I have an extra window on the other side, the high end side. And so it's making it look better on that side. But I'm telling you, I've tried this powder in a million different ways and different lightings comparing the two. The number seven one is better. It just doesn't look that way in this lighting. And I'm like, dang it, of course it doesn't. But I promise it is, okay? You just gotta trust me. And when I say it looks flatter, I mean like, you know, the difference, the line between where your like natural eye bags are and then like your cheek skin, if you will, is so much less prominent on this one where I use the cheaper one versus the Charlotte Tilbury. That is what I've noticed across the board. I've been using this and comparing it to this over and over again and consistently, no matter how I'm using it, the number seven one is just that much better than the Charlotte Tilbury. Another little tidbit of knowledge is that the Charlotte Tilbury one actually comes with less product than the number seven. So you're getting eight grams with the Tilbury and then 10 grams Tilbury. That just sounded funny. It sounded like I was saying Pillsbury. Eight grams with the Charlotte Tilbury one and 10 grams with the number seven. So you're getting more and you're paying way less. We're talking about a $32 price difference. So in the battle between these two, I think the drugstore side wins. Taking a little coffee break. I've got all my notes typed up and I'm trying to like scroll up. I had to make the font huge so I could see it from across the room. These are my real problems though. I put my contacts in this morning, but I need to change the contacts. They're like monthly ones and my eyes are so dry right now with allergy season that I put them in, started doing my makeup. They got so dry. I was like, I've got to take them out. So I, I literally just don't have them in right now. Next one, 
MAC paint pots. So over the years, I've had quite a few MAC paint pots. The one I currently have that I use sometimes for eye primer is the one in Painterly. I've also owned Soft Ochre. I like them both. I think Painterly at this point really is the perfect match if you're my skin tone. They have many different options, but I wanna talk about the formula here. I like to use this kind of a product as an eye primer because it is so similar to my skin tone. And I think it does a pretty good job with evening it all out if you're gonna put eyeshadow on top and holding onto the shadow so it lasts longer throughout the day. Now, I'm not the biggest eye primer girl these days. I just, it's a step I skip a lot. I mean, I'm a mom of a toddler. And while I do love makeup and it's a, obviously a big part of my life, it's a step that for me, since I don't have a big problem with eyeshadow creasing, I don't worry about it. Obviously, if you do have a problem with that, it is something you probably do every day. You can see how it really canceled it out really nicely. There's a reason I've repurchased it. I genuinely like the MAC Paint Pots for primer. However, last year I discovered this product from Revolution Pro. It's sold at Ulta. It is $8 and it's in very, very similar packaging. It's got glass packaging like the MAC one. And as I started using this more and more, I'm like, my gosh, it really is similar to the MAC one. Obviously, tone-wise, these are different. I would say this shade that I have in the Revolution one is a dupe for soft ochre. It's a lot more of a yellow base, whereas they have another shade called Central that I'm pretty sure, based on swatches I saw online, might be a dupe for painterly. And then I think they have like a shimmery one. The Revolution one has 3.4 grams and the MAC one has five grams. So you do get a little bit more with the MAC. I will say products like this, they eventually dry out. So if you're not gonna use the entire MAC one, that last, you know, gram and a half might get wasted so wasted. I think they're very, very similar. I actually think that the Revolution ones are maybe slightly more pigmented, uh, and so they might cover a little bit more. I've got like this dryness right on the inner part of my eye. Anyone ever get that? I can't decide if it is like an allergy thing or not, but anyway. Jessica, we get it, you have allergy. I guess at the end of the day, very similar effect. $8 versus $22. I think you're better off doing the $8 option. I feel like Revolution though has been like screwing me a lot lately because they keep discontinuing things I love. <laughs> or at least not selling them at Ulta anymore where it's way easier for me to get it than like from the Revolution site. So anyway, I think these are fantastic. I think, I don't know that one is necessarily better than the other. I genuinely just think they're the exact same. So at the end of the day, if you're just wanting to save money, get the Revolution one because they really perform exactly the same. Does anyone else, I, I hear so much debate online about the best way to say that something is less expensive. If we say, cheaper or like cheap dupes because people are like, well, cheap makes it sound bad because of the neg negative connotation. Then if we say more affordable, people are like, well, it's not affordable to everyone. I'm like, fair, and that's a fair point. And so I think the lesser of all evils is to say the least expensive, but man, it is crazy like the power of words. Some words rub people the wrong way and it's just, it's just so interesting. You guys know I'm like a word nerd and I just love thinking about words and anyway. Oh, oh, oh. This is actually, I think, a really exciting one. I recently was sent a bunch of the Laura Mercier caviar sticks, and one of my favorite shades is this one in rose gold. These are $29, so these are not cheap babies, and they're really pretty. I know, it's like, there we go. It's hard to see it because of the shimmer. It's a really just like light, pretty, very creamy, cream shadow. Well, I had already owned these CoverGirl ones and I was like, gosh, these are so similar. And so the closest shade I could find to this one I really like is in 920, which is called Frivolous. These are just as creamy. They're These two are not the exact same shade, but aren't they awfully similar? Frivolous has a little bit of glitter in it. It's very fine, but the glitter is there, whereas the Laura Mercier one does not. The Laura Mercier one is 29 bucks. The CoverGirl one is 9.99, and I'm pretty sure you can get it cheaper if you like poke around online, or of course with coupons. They have a decent amount of shades in the CoverGirl range, and of course the Laura, Laura Mercier range, I think they just expanded and there are even more. But my gosh, $10 versus $30 is a huge difference for virtually the same product. So let me show you what they look like on the Laura Mercier one. Let's just, and obviously for me, this is a color awfully close to my skin tone, so it's not gonna do a ton, but I do think it's really pretty for a quick look just to have like kind of a shimmer. So they're super creamy. I just kind of tap it in. But here's the CoverGirl one. This one shows up a little bit more, I think because of the glitter. I don't typically have like glitter fallout because it's kind of suspended in that creamy formula. So yeah, this is not doing them much justice. I will say this, cream shadow sticks, I think I like the idea of, 
but I don't find myself reaching for them very often. It's not for, I mean, obviously they're easy to use. You just go do, do, do and, and blend it in. But I don't know, I'd much prefer just using a powder shadow or if I'm gonna use a cream, I like them in a pot, I can dip my brush in it and kind of spread them onto my eyelids. So I don't know, I'm just not a big cream shadow girl, but I do think if you are, like I said, the CoverGirl one, I think the formula, I've swatched and played with quite a few of the colors. Here, let me just share a couple other CoverGirl ones I think are really nice. This one in 930 is, oh my gosh, it's really, really gorgeous. It's like a kind of a satin taupe kind of a color. And then this other one in the shade 900 is more of a matte. It's almost like an eye primer base. You're not gonna be able to see it. Super cream, yeah, there it is. It's literally like the color of my skin tone, but would be a great eye primer stick if you'd prefer that format. So I wanted to give them a shout out even though these aren't really my cup of tea because they are good products and for $10 instead of 30, I would say save your money, go the CoverGirl route. I can feel it in my bones. This is gonna be a long video. I try my best to like talk faster and like move on, but I just, I can't do it guys. This might be my favorite. Oh, that's hard to say, but this might be my favorite dupe, okay? One of my favorite products ever, and I've recently pulled it back out when I like kind of shot my stash and have been using it like crazy, is a product I've had for years and it's probably never gonna go bad. It is this MAC Pigment in Tan. And I've had so many of you guys say like, is there a dupe for it? I don't really wanna spend, you know, 20 bucks or whatever on this product. It is a literal loose pigment. The full size is $22. However, I almost didn't even worry about finding a dupe because the mini size, which again, you're never gonna use up is 12. So it's not crazily priced if you just go that route. Now the size I have is the full size. This is what it looks like. And it catches the light so unbelievably beautifully that I love over any eye look I do, just tapping it onto my lid, blending it in, and when I wear this pigment, I get so many compliments. There's a product that's been available forever, and maybe other people already know this as a dupe, and maybe it's just because so much time has passed and I was talking about it. I didn't know it was a dupe until I swatched it this week, and I was like, what? I'm gonna die if I go back in a dupes video of mine from like five years ago, and I've already found this as a dupe. <laughs> uh, yep. I wasn't wrong. In a 2016 dupes video, I just looked it up. I am there just mentioning Amber Rush as a dupe for the MAC pigment and tan. <laughs> but there is something to learn here, and that would be that the MAC pigment I have in the 2016 video is the same one I have now. And I use it all the time, and it's barely gone down, and it hasn't gone bad. So the good news is that a uh, little bit goes a long way and it will literally last you forever. <laughs> I'm such an idiot, you guys. I repurchased this recently because I missed it in my collection. It is the L'Oreal Infallible Shadow in Amber Rush. Now, I could not find this like on Ulta's site or anything, but at my local like regular store where I would buy makeup called Meyer, <laughs> They had all of the colors in stock. It doesn't look like it's discontinued, but trying to find it online, like I was able to find it on Amazon. So that's what I'm linking for you below. This I found for like six bucks online. And if you really look, okay, there's the MAC one, right? There's the L'Oreal one. And as you look at them and how the light catches both, it is exactly the same. Can you believe that? I can't tell the difference. That's why I was like freaking out. So we're gonna put the MAC one on this eye, of course, and then the L'Oreal one on the other. I just, oh, it's such a pretty color. I just like to tap it on. And again, it just catches the light so perfectly. I'm gonna grab a clean brush to kind of just blend it into the crease. We're not doing much with the eyes today because I wanna be able to focus on these different products and how they perform compared to one another. Amber Rush from L'Oreal. I just love this color. Let me show you it in natural light. In natural lighting, that's the L'Oreal one and that's the MAC one. Don't they catch the light just so beautifully? Also, look at that dry skin. What do I do, guys? What do I do? Anyway, they look exactly the same. So in the battle between the two, if you're dying to have the MAC one, get the mini one for 12 bucks, but otherwise go for the L'Oreal. I'm telling you guys, they are the exact same. If I'm being honest, the L'Oreal packaging is so much more pleasing to use than the MAC one. So that's another point in L'Oreal's favor. We're gonna have to cheat on this one just a little bit. Okay, so just bear with me. We have one of my favorite eyeliners of all time, the Hourglass 1.5 millimeter liner. These stupid things, and I, I'll explain why they're stupid, are $18 a piece. And I run through it in like three weeks because it's so creamy and it's so thin. So it just stinks. 
I've bought like seven of these. They have like three packs where I think you save a little bit of money. I bought that three pack two different times and then I bought a couple individual ones. These are so good and let me explain why. A lot of times I just want a little tiny thin line right at my lash line that's dark. So that way when I put on mascara, it all blends together and it makes my lashes look even fuller. It kind of outlines my eyes a little bit. And what's great about this is it'll do that really, really easily. It's such a teeny tiny point but it's creamy enough that it actually will get in the lash line. Some of, some products like this that are out there that are really thin are just a little bit drier and so they don't glide as easily. So it just makes the job that much harder. And that's why I felt that it was worth buying. I tried quite a few different ones, like the pink one that's the Maybelline, wasn't quite as creamy as I wanted. Well, just this week I discovered the Revlon Colorstay Micro liner. It is $8.49 versus $18. You get the exact same amount of product. And the Revlon one actually has this little smudger on the other side. And it's a really small smudger so you can smudge it out. I'm like, oh my gosh. The reason I said we kind of have to cheat is that my hourglass one is out. I actually thought I already had a backup. <laughs> I don't, which is not surprising to me because I run through them so freaking fast. I'll tell you right now, I'm not repurchasing the hourglass one. I will be repurchasing the Revlon one as long as they make it. So it is just as creamy. It is exactly 1.5 millimeters, so they're the same in that way. And I think that the addition of the little smudger is incredible because sometimes like if you, for me, if I mess it up just a little bit, the smudger kind of fixes things. But on top of that, I kind of like a smudgy eye look. And I do not, I've never found a smudger like this that is this skinny. By the way, quick little shout up. I was just cleaning up where my fingers were touching my face. Quick little shout out to my favorite beauty blender dupe, if you will, alternative, is this Paw Paw Sponge. It's $1.50 on the Shop Miss A site. It's actually the only thing I've ever bought from there because a lovely subscriber sent it to me. I fell in love and bought like seven. <laughs> it's so cheap and they are so good. I like it so much better than the beauty blender. I like it better than the L'Oreal blender that I've loved for years. It's so good. Anyway, in the battle between high-end and drugstore, drugstore wins on this one too. They have a brown one and sometimes I like brown around my eyes too. So I'm definitely gonna purchase that one to be able to kind of switch off. But also it says it's waterproof. I don't typically worry too much about that, but especially if you have watery eyes or whatever, bonus points, right? All right, we gotta get trucking, Jessica. This was a new love this year of mine, the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Powder Foundation. I wear the shade R220. This puppy is $38. That's expensive. I don't use powder foundation every single day, but I do wear it a decent amount in the realm of powders, even though I have dry skin. I feel like powder foundations, even though yes, they're powders and they're gonna make your skin look a little drier. And if you have like peach fuzz, it might catch onto that. But this one does it the least amount and yet it still has beautiful coverage. It looks beautiful applied with a powder brush. I like applying it with this. Sometimes I'll apply it with a damp sponge and it's really, really flawless. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. My best alternative to it is this NYX Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation. It is that similar idea where it's more of like a satin finish versus a totally matte one, especially given the name, and it adds that coverage. It's not crazy powdery. However, I almost didn't mention it because it was marked out on Ulta's site with a new price, not as though it's on sale, but as though it's being discontinued, or at least it's not gonna be sold at Ulta. Right now it's marked down to like $2.50. So if you can get your hands on it and you're interested, now's the time. But I know that in the future, if you're watching this, it might not be available. The Makeup Forever one, I'll go ahead and use. Um, I don't always put it all over my face, but I definitely use it in my T-zone. And I just think, look how like compared to without it and with. Everything looks just that little bit more perfected and even and oh, I just love it. The NYX one I think does a very similar thing. It just perfects, it's not too, too powdery. It makes everything look nice and even. Like I said, if the NYX one's available when you're watching this, I really think it's great. It's been around for a while and if they really are discontinuing it, I'm really bummed because I think it's such a good powder. But obviously I also really like the Makeup Forever. I think that at the end of the day, the Makeup Forever one might be slightly less powdery but it's so slight that if you can save the money, go for it. But I, I could see myself rebuying the Makeup Forever one if the next one really is discontinued. Are you guys gonna tell me I had that gross white liner on my lips, like the inner part of my lips? Some friend you are. I'm gonna throw on some mascara real fast. I don't have a mascara dupe. While I'm applying this mascara, I'll tell you about a mascara that everyone told me was a dupe and it was not. I have been loving the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. I'll put a picture on the screen. And so I've been looking for a dupe and I'm still on the hunt for a dupe. But the L'Oreal Double Extend Mascara 
was mentioned in a lot of blogs online and different like forums online as a possible dupe for it? No, not even close. I don't think it's necessarily a bad mascara if you want a really, really natural look, but it's that two-step kind of thing where you put the primer on and then you put that thing on. And A, it didn't really do much for my lashes. And B, it takes more time. So I'm like, well, why would I waste my time doing that? I can get a natural look from many other mascaras in one step. So not only did I not love it, but it was definitely not a dupe. It may be a tubing mascara. I didn't notice that it really was tubing my lashes, but no, I just did not love it. By the way, the mascara I'm using that I love right now is the L'Oreal Bambi Eye Mascara. Also this top, this is taking me forever to do my mascara. This top I got, if you saw my very, very recent Amazon fashion try on, I tried all of the products you guys like have loved over the years, like the best stuff you've ever bought on Amazon clothing wise. And those recommendations were insane. Thanks to you guys, I now have a Lululemon dupe that's like an actual, I've tried like five dupes for my favorite Lululemon leggings. None of them were even close. Finally, y'all like came through and there actually is one that I'm telling you, I own like four Lululemon ones and now I own these. They are exactly the same. So I'll link that video up in the eye and down below. So this was one I'd had in my collection for a while, both of these, and I don't think I had realized they were dupes until recently when I was swatching them. So this is the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Bronzer in the shade Into Sun, which is the lightest shade. It is $30. They've got a really nice shade range, which is one thing they have going for it for sure. And the packaging I think is absolutely gorgeous. I felt, however, that this is kind of a hard pressed formula that I, I struggle to get it out of the pan compared to other bronzers, but I'm gonna put it on over here so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. It's definitely a lighter bronzer, which I like. I, I don't mind lighter bronzers. It looks a little bit more natural on the skin for me anyway. However, I found a dupe that's $9.99 and it is from Milani and it is their Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. I have the shade 01. So I don't know shade-wise across both of these how many dupes there may be. These shades are so similar. So if you've been looking for a light bronzer, I would say go for this Milani one. The Milani one actually is way more pigmented, which is not always a good thing because you know sometimes you can get a little heavy handed and it makes it almost harder to work with. So I don't always like super pigmented. So I have to be a little bit careful with this Milani one, but I really like the formula. It stays on really well throughout the day. And the Milani one just has that same kind of staying power as the Fenty one, but it's literally, literally a third of the price. So packaging wise, the Milani one is also cute. It's got the gold and then the like print on the actual pan. I think it's so pretty. I would say if there's a shade that's gonna work for you in the Milani range, go that route. I actually think the Milani one is slightly better formula wise than the Fenty one. Another exciting dupe find was two different dupes for the beloved YSL Rouge Volupt Shine lip products. I have the shade number eight. Actually, this shade is not sold on Sephora, but I don't know that this shade is what everyone needs. I think the formula is what is so lovely, but I do like this shade and I think this one is probably sold like on Nordstrom, Macy's, those like department store sites. What makes this so wonderful is that it is this colored balm that is, it's like a lipstick, but it has this beautiful kind of sheen to it and like moisturizing quality. And so it, it feels comfortable to wear, it's pretty. Of course the packaging is stupidly beautiful. At least if you're gonna pay the $36 that this costs, you're getting nice, like really designer-esque packaging. It has a very strong scent that I don't mind in this case, but it would definitely turn someone off that doesn't like scents or if you just didn't like this particular scent. However, I have two dupes, you guys. One is a newer product to me and it is a newer line. It's from Revlon, it's their super luscious line, but they have a shine version. And this shine version, this particular shade I have is Nude Illuminator. I don't think any of these colors I have for these dupes are actual color dupes for the YSL, but it's the formula I'm looking at because there are a million colors in all of these lines. So you could just pick one that you'd actually like. The Revlon one is $9.99. It is, I'm telling you, the exact same formula. They feel exactly the same on the lips. In fact, when I first tried this Revlon one, I was like, gosh, it reminded me of, well, truthfully, it reminded me of the old Revlon lip butters that I loved, but I do think this is slightly creamier. And I'm like, what does it remind me of? It's these YSL lip products. And then the other dupe I have is also $9.99. Again, I think both of these you can get for cheaper if you just dig around or have a coupon or a sale. The L'Oreal Colory Shine lip products. This one I have is in Varnish Rosewood. Again, not a shade dupe, but a beautiful color. 
super creamy, super moisturizing. So there's the L'Oreal one, there's the Revlon one, and there's the YSL one. In fact, I think that the L'Oreal and Revlon ones might have a slight bit more sheen. They have the same feeling on the lips, all of them, and I just think they're all so good. They're all so, so similar, you guys. And so I, I couldn't even pick a favorite out of any of them. I just love them all so much. I don't really know what to do because color-wise these are pretty darn different, so I can't really like split my lips down the middle. So there's the YSL one. It's a kind of a nice pink. If I ever did buy another one of these, I don't know that I would because I don't feel like I need to, you know? But if I ever did, I think I'd go for a more like peachy nude versus this pink, but I do like it. And let's let's just put on the Revlon one on top. Actually, duh. Revlon one there, and then we'll do the L'Oreal one over here again. Totally different shades. Huh, they look actually pretty similar when they're actually on my lips. L'Oreal, Revlon, YSL. Very, very, very similar. I'm gonna mix them all together. One last quick dupe. Oh my gosh, this video is so long. It's gonna take forever to edit. Is actually for a discontinued brush. This was my favorite brush for like cream bronzer. And it's the Sephora Pro Dome Sippling Brush number 41. It is discontinued. They've redone their brush line and they don't have this exact brush anymore. They have them one that's similar, but there were complaints about this shedding and I do think it does shed a little bit. And that's probably why they didn't remake it with their new relaunch. However, I found a product that is so, so similar. It is this Eco Tools brush. It is their blending and bronzing brush where the Sephora one originally cost $36. This one costs $9.99. It's actually softer than this. And so I feel like it really, it doesn't feel as rough on your skin. I also have another brush that's an honorable mention. It's clearly not a dupe, but it has kind of taken over as a favorite cream bronzer brush. And it is this e.l.f. Ultimate Blending Brush. It's like six bucks. I've really been enjoying this lately for applying my cream bronzer. So either one of these, you're gonna be good to go. The e.l.f. one's even cheaper. Obviously they're not exact dupes for this, but they're just really, really good. And I wanted to throw it in. I told you I'd show you guys this in natural light. So like thinking through the eyes, they really do look the same. Uh, the, well, the lips, they really do though, y'all can see. Bronzer wise, I feel like my bronzer looks exactly the same. Would you guys agree? Powder wise, like everything's looking nice and covered. Under eye, I still stand by that the number seven one is better than the Charlotte Tilbury. They're very similar, but there is no reason, like I will not be repurchasing the Charlotte Tilbury one now that I've found that one. That liner, I know it's the same on both sides, but I just think that liner is so easy, so pretty and it gets the job done and it's so creamy. I am like so excited that I found that dupe. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love doing them, clearly. I mean, this is just like something that's always been a staple on my channel and I will always do dupes videos. So if you do enjoy them, definitely check out my other dupes. I have a whole playlist I will link down below if you wanna binge watch them. Like I said earlier, I stand by all of the dupes I've recommended in the past. So if you enjoyed this video, I talk a lot about drugstore here on my channel. I also do other videos. I do fashion, I do home, I do cooking, fitness, all kinds of stuff. So I'd love to have you subscribe and join our family. It's free and of course, it makes it easier to find my videos as I upload them in the future. And I'd love to say hi to you guys in the meantime on my social media. It is at It's Jessica Braun and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.